the book review, The Gift of Imperfections, and uh, we were discussing Guidepost 2. We started discussing last week. It is about um, letting go of perfectionism and uh, embracing compassion. So we talked about perfectionism, how it is not a good thing, and we talked about healthy achieving. So today we are going to look at perfectionist tendencies. Perfectionism exists along a continuum. We all have some perfectionist tendencies, all of us. I mean, we are not exempt from it. For some, it may emerge only when they are particularly vulnerable. For others, it can be compulsive, chronic, and debilitating, similar to addiction. So addiction is not just um, drugs or drinking, alcohol, or something like that. If you are, if something happens and you go and clean at a, you know, you, you're, you're used to like, I have to clean all this, you know, um, to be perfect or everything, that is also an addiction. Anything that you are doing, which you otherwise would not do wholeheartedly is addiction. If you're binge watching TV, whatever you're doing uh, in a compulsive way to you're reacting to something, then that is addiction. So two critical steps in overcoming perfection is exploring our fears and changing our self-talk. Why, what is happening to me? What am I scared of? That I'm doing this out of my comfort zone where I'm not enjoying it, but I'm still doing it. So that is like exploring our fear, right? And changing our self-talk. We have to tell ourselves that we are good enough. It's okay. And it doesn't matter what people think. As long as you know who you are, as long as you are grounded, then and you honor yourself, you have self-esteem, then it doesn't matter to you what other people think or how you are not vulnerable in a state that um, if somebody comes and sees that my house is not clean. So let's say you had a very long work day, you have your kid is sick, you are taking care of things, you yourself are not so doing well. Then somebody says, hey, I want to come for dinner. I'm in the neighborhood. Your friend is visiting after like 15 years. She's in the neighborhood. She did not plan it properly that she would come to your house, but she happened to pass through your neighborhood and say, hey, I wanted to meet you. You're meeting your friend after 15 years or it doesn't matter, neighbor, whoever it is, they are coming to meet you out of love for you. You don't have to go on a rampage and clean up everything. Honestly, nobody sees the house, your house, the imperfections of your house like you do, similar to how you don't see your imperfections. Others don't see your imperfections as you do. People who love you come to see you, visit you, talk to your family. They don't see, okay, they saw. The house is not clean. So what? That is a very, very minor thing and they'll forget. They will remember the hosting you did, the love you have shown, how you attended them. That's all it is. So we need to take steps in overcoming perfectionism. Perfectionism, perfectionism self-talk is, I'm ashamed of how I look. I need to be different than I am right now to be worthy of love and belonging. That is perfectionism self-talk. You have to change that because unless you see yourself in a beautiful way, you don't reflect that. When you don't reflect that, others don't see that in you. You expecting people to see something that you don't see in yourself it is not going to happen. And for example, let's say like um, I have to be a certain size to be able to wear a certain dress. You see, there are many obese people, overweight people who look fabulous in dresses, anything in skirts. Dress, there is nothing like you cannot wear this because they portray confidence. They are comfortable and they are enjoying themselves in those clothing. When they enjoy themselves in their clothing, in their clothing, you will see them as beautiful. Oh my God, she's, in spite of that figure, she's still managing to handle that dress. That's amazing, right? How many times we have seen people who are overweight, but they are amazing and beautiful in how they look. At the same time, there are skinny people who don't look good in certain clothing because even with their skinny nature, they are still worried about, oh, I have this small muffin top, this, that, they don't look good. It portrays. So what you tell yourself inside is seen outside. So change your self-talk. Healthy achieving. This is where I we were just talking about mirror work. 
healthy striving self talk i want this for me you are not doing this because somebody else will want it for you like oh she should be having this she should be they should have this in their house they should be driving this car they should be in this community no i want this for me i want to feel better and healthier don't do things because you want to fit in a certain clothes for a certain party and after that i'm good so for these 10 days i will diet because a wedding is coming i want to look great in that clothing and after that i can eat when you're always working towards i can eat after this that is not healthier lifestyle so i want to feel better and healthier is a better approach and you are more likely to see the results if you think that way if i believe that i'm worthy of love and respect now it will invite courage compassion and connection into my life right it doesn't matter where you are take what you have do the best you can that is my mantra for my kids to anybody i talk to that's what i say take what you have as of today that is the fertile ground on which you can sow seeds for tomorrow if you don't take what you have and you're always working with lack i don't have this i don't have that i don't have that i cannot do this i am not like this then you're always looking at the lack because you're looking at the lack you're missing all the you're so focused on the lack that you're missing all the opportunities of which are going to give you abundance so it will invite courage compassion and connection into my life if i respect myself now if i love myself now then it will you know and i want to figure this out for me not for anybody else for me i can do this so the best way of healthy achieving is doing mirror work louise hay she has done amazing amazing work i have the books of her healing your body i used to use that book a lot um basically it talks about how most of our, unless you have a physical structural problem like you broke your wrist you have you met with an accident and you broke your spine in some way those problems are physically there is a accident and it those recover pretty quickly actually any fracture or anything based on your age and fitness they will recover within 6 weeks 6 months they will recover but any chronic illnesses you have back pain overweight diabetes thyroid any of the chronic illnesses you have often times they are because of psychosomatic illnesses psychosomatic means i am psychologically thinking my beliefs my beliefs that are stored in my subconscious my subconsciousness and all those things because of those they are that beliefs are not serving you that's why they are causing discomfort this is it is not ease it is causing a discomfort to your body that is what disease is so louis hay's book actually tells what is the reason why you have a certain ailment and what is the affirmation you have to tell yourself to program your mind to override that bad belief or negative belief so louis hay's mirror work is basically you look into your mirror and you talk about everything and there are 21 days and they are literally like peeling the layers off you will confront things and things will surface actually the other day um i think i was doing day 4 i was stuck on day 4 for a long time um i remembered something that happened 35 years ago almost 32 33 years ago i never thought about it until now like how you remember your childhood right i used to do this or this any positive or negative things so oh, my mom used to say this to me all the time or my dad used to be so strict or whatever right this never occurred to me i never thought about this until now something that was 30 plus years ago surfaced it was mind boggling oh my god and that was stored as guilt for me and i was like oh my god and i was talking to my husband about day 4 and all of a sudden that came up and i was relating that to my son right now on how i used to do this i had guilt stored in me we have to consider what he is doing as maybe something like that we were all there i have been there done that kind of scenario so i strongly recommend mirror work anybody to understand if at all you have a question why me why is this happening to me in my life right now or you just want it doesn't matter let's say you're in a neutral state where you don't have any problems you're perfectly fine your life is great but doing your mirror work will accelerate your growth your success because any traces 
of negative beliefs you have will surface up you cleanse it and you are like gone right you are you have accelerated a lot it it will really really help so we have been doing mirror work annie is the one who's organizing it she's part of this group i think today she's in the call right now so she can talk about mirror work if you want at the end of this call but it has been amazing amazing journey for me at least i am in day 11 today we finished 21 days and we resumed again from day 1 uh, i think today day 2 is going on so i strongly recommend mirror work i will send the link to the join the group if anyone is interested um, you can join it uh, but please for me my policy is there are a lot of good things out there unless you commit yourself to do it if this is not the good time for you to do it don't join unless you commit to do it regularly join otherwise what you are going to do is you are going to build unnecessary guilt which is not required you are not if you don't have time to join right now the fact that this is good but you are not able to do it is going to create a little bit of guilt but if you are part of a group and you are not doing anything and you are seeing other people writing testimonials on how it helped them that is going to keep on increasing the guilt for you so please don't join if you are not going to commit yourself but this is a really really great way of exploring yourself um ramana maharshi's who am i ninu with else go right this mirror work will help you understand who you truly are beneath all this surface of the facade we put in the society or what my personality is all that right so i personally feel that i am exploring my true self by doing the mirror work so and benefits of positive self talk a healthier immune system reduced pain better cardiovascular health improved mental health improved self esteem increased vitality greater life satisfaction reduced stress better physical well being increased life span this is all self talk and mirror work explores you to do the self talk to love yourself to be compassionate with yourself and it is not just that it asks you once a lot of people say i am a very nice person i give give and give i do not get anything in return or i do not expect anything in return i just sacrifice myself the person who says i'm sacrificing myself for others i really want to make you understand that you are not you are doing it for some gain you are definitely doing it for some gain the moment you word the word, use the word sacrifice the moment you use the word sacrifice you are saying that i'm giving up away something of mine that means you are not doing it wholeheartedly you are doing it because you are thinking of it as a burden a responsibility i have to do this that is the reason you are doing it that's not that is not sacrifice right so this book teaches about how to be unless you are compassionate to yourself unless you love yourself you cannot love others you cannot be compassionate with others unless you are compassionate with yourself right so this um in gift of imperfections um the author quotes pema chodron she is a american who converted into a buddhist monk um she passed away i think in 2020 or something uh, at the age of 80 plus she wrote several books on buddhism and buddhist philosophies and she um dr brainy brown recommends this book and she talks about this book she takes things from this book not just this book i think when things fall apart the places that scare you and comfortable with uncertainty cultivating fearlessness and compassion so there is a thing that you have to be fearless to be able to be compassionate with yourself and others it doesn't sound right that compassionate is a good thing fearlessness seems like not such a good thing i don't know if people agree to that but a lot of people have a problem in saying that i'm fearless when will you become fearless when you don't care about what people think right so compassion compassion means i went through this i understand what you're going right you cannot just if you did not go through the same churn you cannot be compassionate with other people so anybody who says i only give and give i'm a very nice person to others i sacrifice myself i don't look into my comfort but i give comfort to others that is i really want those people to look into themselves and see why they are doing what they are doing it is not right 
all those things. So in this mirror work, it actually increasing, it talks about increasing the circle of compassion. That means be loving and take self-care of yourself first, then increase it to others. If you never took self-care of yours, how do you know how to care for others? How do you know what is a good way of taking care for others? There are so many different ways of caring, right? So think about it. I mean, this book is awesome. This book is like literally it is um, 108, one page each, 108 things. And um, it's it's really nice. Comfortable with uncertainty. How can you be comfortable with uncertainty and how can you embrace compassion and things like that? Practicing imperfections. How do we practice imperfection? Shift from perfectionism to healthy achieving will be amazing. So practicing imperfection means being who you are. If according, if I am somebody who does not clean the house every day, who does not organize the house every day, who does not dress according to the norm, I'm imperfect, right? Because I don't fit into the society. But if that is what I want to do, then I have to practice my imperfection. I'm not saying that practicing imperfection means being dirty, being not organized, being whatever you want. Yes, but in a different way. If you do anything wholeheartedly, it will not hurt anybody else. Anything you do wholeheartedly, it will never hurt anybody else. If you move from perfectionism to healthy achieving, actually you become a role model for others, everybody around you. How to be okay with who you are, what you are, where you are, how you are. That is practicing imperfection. Perfectionism does not lead to desired results. So if you, I have to run a marathon by the time I'm 40, but a lot of things happened in between. Life happened. I was not able to practice. You will not get your desired results. You will not hit your goals, your milestones. May not. It's okay. To live and love with our whole hearts, engage with the world from a place of authenticity and worthiness. You have to be authentic. You have to be your true self. If you're not authentic, you are lost, you feel lost, you are not satisfied. You don't feel worthy enough. You always feel like I don't belong here, right? So we have to always come from the place of authenticity and worthiness. You have to see yourself as worthy first for others to see you as worthy. And whenever for people who say that my spouse does not see me, respect me enough, my mom does not see me like this, my dad, my employer, my kid, are you looking at yourself? Do you think you are worthy enough? If you are authentic and you are worthy enough, you will become fearless to stand your ground and not entertain what other people are doing to you. And actually, you living your life authentically scares people. You setting boundaries, you living your life, you saying no, you able to say no scares people. They will not walk all over you. If people are walking all over you, it is your problem. It is nobody's problem. It is not, you cannot say that they are taking advantage of me. Why did you even give a chance to take advantage, right? Why did you let them walk all over you? Why didn't you set right boundaries? And it's never late. You can always start. How to guide, right? Um, how to let go of perfectionism, right? Speak about your imperfections in a tender and honest way. You know, not be rude. Without shame and fear. Don't be ashamed. See, again, my when I'm setting, people say that, oh, there are some, let's say you're a doctor. Actually, the other day, uh, Vijaya was uh, telling her example, right? She's a doctor. She helps a lot of people. But she said it came, she didn't know how to say no to people. She had her own personal life. She was really crossing the limits of giving her way her personal space. She was not happy because she was not having any downtime. She had to say no to people. You need not be rude. You can tell in a very tender and honest way that these are my hours. After this, it's my family time. I'm sorry, I cannot do this. Some people are very, very persistent. They will guilt shame you. They will say there are a lot of people to help. How can you, being a doctor, you take a vote to help people and how can you not help people. She said that so many people have 
made her feel guilty and ashamed but yes i have a life other than me being a doctor right so you have to stand your ground other people being doing whatever it is not their problem because they are trying everybody wants to see how much they can push if you see if you have a toddler at home you know how much they push the boundaries can i touch this can i touch that always their questions are how much can i push how much access do i have it is not just toddlers you have teenagers everybody does that but it is not about others it is about you how can i tell you in a nice way i cannot do this if they if they ask you 10 times 10 times the answer is no 100 times the answer is no this is my time this is what i can do take it or lose it i'm sorry i will not bend and move around to entertain you i'm sorry this is my life main thing is in a tender and honest way but without shame and fear speak about your imperfections let's say somebody is shaming you because you're overweight your spouse or somebody right um are you not ashamed like why are you overeating you complain about your weight why are you overeating maybe you're eating because overeating because you're stressed out at work whatever reason right yes you you will take care of yourself when you have to and you can take care of yourself any other person cannot know you 100% even though they are your spouse mom son anybody whoever is very close to you they still cannot see what is going on here on a particular day you do what you can if other people are shaming you it is up to you whether you want to take that or not you cannot shut them out let them be who they are you be who you are you stand steadfast ground that i am this you cannot ever say that somebody else is making me do this it's not fair they never understand they push me so much no that is why do you care about them that is them you are not here to change them they are in their own journey let them be that is a lesson that they are not getting it they are not getting it when somebody is putting boundaries to respect them other thing one more thing when we talk so much about boundaries when the only way you can set boundaries and when you respect others boundaries you have to first step is you have to learn to respect other boundaries if you respect others boundaries then you will know that i am respecting your boundaries i have my own right when you have your own boundaries it doesn't matter no matter how the world is it doesn't matter to you because you are respecting others boundaries and you are setting your own boundaries be slow to judge yourselves and others here what i mean by that is don't judge yourself yes don't be too harsh on yourself at the same time don't judge others if somebody is pushing you a lot you don't know what their pressures are what they are trying to achieve don't judge them let them be we don't know again nobody knows in entirety what other person is going through so let them be let you be yourself and don't judge yourself too harshly operate from a place of we are all doing the best we can yes anybody at any given point of time always is doing their best their best meaning today if my best is 10% so be it that is my best today tomorrow if i do 100% or if i did in the past 1000% that was my best that day for whatever reason i cannot replicate it now for whatever reason i cannot replicate it right now same thing with others oh that person used to give so much of their time to me now they are not giving it what happened they seem okay to me no you have no idea you have no idea how i am okay or not same thing you have no idea how if the other person is okay or not whatever works for you whatever principles for you same thing for others too the moment you have that understanding there is lot of harmony the chaos goes away you don't blame others you don't blame yourself have your courage compassion and connection rooted in the way you treat yourself courage and compassion are very very important courage to say no courage to be okay with where you are compassionate enough with yourself to be okay with what you are compassionate with others to let them be what they are that is all very very important it this is inner peace when you can follow these steps that's when you are peaceful here otherwise it is so much chaos you are unnecessarily stressed out you are yelling at everybody you are not happy you are not calm when you are not calm around you your world is not calm the world you it's always the other way people will think that i am not calm because i live in a chaotic world no 
the moment you find your inner peace, everything else feels calmer. You have the capability to handle the chaos around you only when you feel your inner peace or you feel calm around you and inside you. It is not the other way around. Nobody is disrupting your peace. You yourself are disrupting your peace based on how you are responding to the external situations. And how do you respond to external situations? Based on how you treat yourself. So it all starts from here. I have to treat myself properly first. Me first. I come first. It is not selfish. Because unless you take care of yourself first, you cannot take care of the external world. So we talked about how to, what is perfection, why we should not be achieving for perfection and everything and letting go of perfection, embracing self-compassion. So we are come to self-compassion. Self-compassion is a kind approach, identify the struggle, nurture the inner child, decide to be a healthy adult. Again, to practice self-compassion, I strongly recommend mirror work. That is what gets you from not liking yourself to becoming a healthy adult. So a moment of self-compassion can change your entire day. Start with it. Start with it and see. A string of such moments can change your the course of your life. What are the elements of self-compassion? Self-kindness, common humanity, mindfulness. Self-kindness means being warm and understanding towards ourselves. When we suffer, fail or feel inadequate, mainly you have to be nice to you. When you suffer, when you fail, when you feel inadequate, Rather than ignoring our pain or beat up ourselves with self-criticism. Let's say you are dieting and you went and you ate with your friends or somebody came. You went to a restaurant, you ate a happy meal. You were so happy. You indulged in food, good food. You talked, you had a great time. You cannot come back. Obviously, next day you see your scale, you will have gained a few pounds. Don't be self-critical. So basically, at any given point of time, you have a choice. In that moment, you chose to spend good time, to give up your guard, to let go your guard, because you're doing it with great difficulty, dieting. So you let it go and you indulged. It's okay. You will again start from there. It's okay. You have life. Again, people say, live as if tomorrow you're not going to die. You're going to die. Okay, what? So what? I died heavy. So what? Next life. I have one more life. I don't think I'm going to get moksha this life. Or if that is the case, then how does it worry? Like, okay, you got moksha, right? If I didn't get moksha, I have another life. If you take things easily and not be so caught up on things, it actually helps you smoothen the process. It lubricates the process. It, there is no resistance. So be kind to yourself. Common humanity. Recognizing that suffering and feelings of personal inadequacy are part of shared human experience. You are not alone. You are not alone in thinking this way. So many people think inadequate are not. The world is filled with looking at lack. I don't have this. If you have a garden full of fruits and vegetables, instead of seeing how much I have, looking at, oh, this year I did not get enough plums. This year I did not get enough um apricots when you are looking at what you didn't get you are not appreciating what you have yes you can say that if i didn't don't see the lack how will i fix it yes notice that this year for some reason the apricot didn't fruit as much what can i do what happened a lot of factors a lot of factors the weather how much it rained how much it was sunny last time or did you forget to water them what happened? Did you forget to fertilize them? There are so many things. Only when you think in a constructive way of what can I do about this? Do I First thing is, do I want to do anything about this? If you're busy, you cannot then forget about it. If you want to do something about it, what can I do about it? But don't keep thinking, oh my God. Thinking in lack. It's not just you. Everybody thinks about it. Whenever we think of a problem, it is we are not alone. Suffering, feelings of personal inadequacy, it's everybody in the human world is doing it. We all go through that. You are not alone. Why is this happening to me? Oftentimes when we say, why is this happening to me? We compare with somebody for whom the same thing is not happening 
and we'll say, why it is happening to me? That is jealousy. That is envy. That is ego. Think of all the people who are worse than you. If you have any health problem, be grateful that it is only so much, irrespective of which stage it is, it is so much because there are people who, any given point of time, there are people who have a worse life than you. Thinking of that and being grateful for your the abundance of, you have in any aspect of your life, if you are terminally ill, then think of, let's say you have parents, you have finances, you have medical insurance. Think of what you have first. Be grateful for that. The moment you are grateful, you are vibrating at a frequency which will absorb more things that you can be grateful about. Right? I know it is very difficult when you are based on certain conditions. It's very difficult. But if you can, that is the ray of hope. That is the string of hope that you will hold on to of abundance, of gratitude, which will pull you up. And it's like, you know, in a ladder, there are different rings, right? The moment I hold on to one ring, somebody, I, I mean, let's say I'm in a well and somebody threw me a ladder and I hold on to one ring that holding on to is the important one, which is, which gives me a chance to go up and come out. I might be like 200 rings down, but I am still holding on. I have to be grateful that I have a ladder. I have to be grateful that I have a ring to hold on to. If there is nothing to hold on to, there is despair, right? No hope. So if I hold on to one ring, if I'm grateful that I have one ring, that gratefulness itself is a positive attitude which will give you energy to make an attempt to see how I can get on to the second one. How can third one, fourth one? And if let's say I came until the fourth one in 20 minutes, I cannot quickly, what do we do? That's mostly with weight loss, right? If I lost five pounds in one month, I'm like, oh my God, if every month I lose five pounds by my goal is 20 pounds, that's it. In this month, many months, I'll do it. No, it is not like that. The last five pounds or 10 pounds are the most difficult, right? Same thing, if you went on to four rings and then you got so tired, you didn't have any energy, that's fine, hold on to it and sleep. Next day, fifth ring and sixth ring, only one ring, you are doing four rings today, tomorrow only one ring, that's also okay. That is your best you can do that day, still fine. Still fine. And if in this life you cannot come out of the fill, that is also okay. At least you came halfway through. You will continue it in your next life. So when you always think that way, that I am good enough, it is okay. How much ever I can do is okay. When you are comfortable with that, that's when you can find peace. That's when you can have some peace in your life. Otherwise, you are always chaotic. Mindfulness, taking a balanced approach to negative emotions. Feelings are neither suppressed nor exaggerated. Don't suppress your feelings. At the same time, don't exaggerate them. Oh my God, this is happening only to me. This is the worst day of my life. Does this happen to anybody else on this earth? You know, some people have a tendency to extrapolate what is happening to them. It is so funny, actually, when you watch them talk. Uh, it's like, really? Come on, Shant. <laughs> it's not that bad. So don't suppress the feelings. At the same time, don't exaggerate it. You cannot ignore our pain and feel compassionate at the same time. You have to acknowledge our pain to be compassionate, but at the same time, acknowledge in the right way. Don't mindfulness is the middle way. We talked about it in the past book review we studied. Buddhist uh, philosophy, there is something called a middle way. Like for everything in Telugu, uh, in Sanskrit, there is a saying called Ati Sarvatra Varchayat. Excess is always bad. Excess is always bad. Not having enough of it is always bad. Middle ground. That is the balanced way. Sthita Pragnatva. The wisdom to be balanced. That is what is mindfulness. So mindfulness. Do not over-identify with thoughts and feelings. Don't get caught up and swept away by negativity. When you are getting um, some negative thoughts, try to see how you can change it, how you can flip the story change the narrative, right? Otherwise, you'll go into a rabbit hole. Being mindful means not just avoiding painful emotions. It is also means not over-identifying with or exaggerating our feelings. It's both. Perfectionism and lack of self-compassion can easily lead to judgment. When you are perfect, you are judging others because you have a benchmark. This is perfect. Being able to run five miles a day is a good, healthy habit. 
That means anybody who is exercising, uh, who is running 10 or 20 miles a day, you're like, oh my God, are they sour grapes, right? You're going to say, oh, they are running 10 miles or 20 miles. They're going to injure their knees, man. It is not good. Running is a very high impact sport on your knees. Why do they want to do that at this age? Why do they want to do that? So you're judging them who are doing better than you. Somebody who's a couch potato who is not even getting up to walk, you're like, can't they run like at least walk five miles a day or one mile a day? When you think you're perfect, you're judging either two people who are doing better than you or worse than you. So don't be judge judgmental, right? How to be mindful? How to be going from here to here? Be kind to yourself. Number one, be kind to yourself. Pause and tell yourself this is not a big deal. We are all, we all have tendencies to make sweeping judgments about everybody who is better than us, who is not better than us. Everybody we judge. We all do the same things. Mistakes happen. If you think you are perfect at a certain thing, somebody else has a higher benchmark, they will think they are perfect than you. So whatever mistakes you are doing in thinking too great of yourself or too less of yourself, they are also doing it. So mistakes happen. It's okay. Forgive and forget and move on. So concluding perfectionism, right? How perfectionism could be hurting you? It gives you more stress, increased anxiety, higher levels of burnout, problems, delegating. You cannot delegate because you are not confident that the other person can do how well you are doing things. If you don't delegate and train people, you will never grow. You will stay in the same status quo. You have to learn, trust, but verify. You have to trust that unless I give a chance to somebody, I don't know how they are going to do it, right? Overly critical and or judgmental, tend to micromanage. Oh my God, this having control freaks. You want to control everything everybody is doing. That is the most, you think you are happy, but you are not. Let me tell you, if you are trying to control somebody else's life, if you are trying to micromanage somebody, if you are trying to tell them why, or how they could do things when they are not able to do things persistently. You're not getting the clue. You're not getting the clue on if somebody is trying to tell you that I cannot do this, please step away. You are coming too close to me. Just some people don't get the message. That's, it is not your problem. It is their problem. Um, habitually overwork and less productive. The more you overwork, the less productive you are. You think you are trying to do more, but long term, you are not achieving anything. You it is not a scalable, maintainable feature. I'll talk in terms of a software product. For a scalable, maintainable feature, it's not enough to keep on building features. You have to think about infrastructure. You have to slow down. You have to look at performance. You have to uh, think about how can it scale when will my working like this be scalable tomorrow when so many things happen. Load testing, performance testing, right? So calm down, take time for yourself. Otherwise, rejuvenate. Otherwise, you cannot sustain the way you're doing it. Perfectionism never happens in a vacuum. There has to be something, right? It is relative. It touches everyone around us. We pass it down to our children. How you lead your life, you are telling your children this, they look up to you. You are their role models for a long time. Until they become teenagers or completely adults or something, you are their role models. Whether you like it or not, you are passing it, you are creating very strong beliefs and imprints in their lives by being who you are. If you want to give proper upbringing to your kids, learn to be good by yourself too. Lead by example. We infect our workplace with impossible expectations. It is suffocating to our friends and family. You being a perfectionist is not at all good for your friends and family. Nobody will like you. Let me tell you this. You being a perfectionist, nobody will like you. Period. Um, compassion. Compassion is to look beyond your own pain to see the pain of others. Being compassionate means I am nice to you. I want the best of you. So do this. No. Try to understand why they are not able to do what you are telling them to do, right? Similar to perfectionism, compassion also spreads quickly. If you are a nice person to yourself and then you have, when you only have, when you are empty inside, you can, there is nothing for you to give people outside. 
once you're full insight or even partially full insight, you have something to give to other people because you are sharing what you have. You cannot give something that you don't have. You cannot give. Some people say, oh, I sacrifice myself completely. I give all of mine to others. No. And compassion is something. It doesn't go down as you are sharing. When you share your love, whatever you are sharing comes back multiplied. So you even become fuller, more lovable and more loved when you are sharing your love with others. So it is never depleting you. So anybody who says, I am not leaving anything for me, I'm sacrificing completely. I don't agree to that. Being kind to ourselves, we create a reservoir of compassion that we can extend to others. Our children learn how to be self-compassionate by watching us. People around us feel free to be authentic and connected. Only when you are authentic, only when you are so sure about yourself, only when you are grounded, people see you and learn to be that way. And people, by people, I mean, not just our kids, anybody who is around you, anybody who's interacting with us closely, they will watch us and learn. So be that. So the last step is digging deep. At the end of every um, guidepost, Dr. Brené Brown, she gives herself on what she does to dig deep. When she um, feels that she's getting into the rut of being a perfectionism, digging deep, she does three things. Get deliberate, get inspired, get going. Get deliberate, she goes and takes the self-compassion. There is Dr. Nurse self-compassion scale. Uh, look at selfcompassion.org. You can take your um, self-test on how compassionate you are and which areas you are lacking. So she does that. She goes there and she sees where she is lacking. And she that is what she's trying to do to understand. For me, I personally, I say affirmations out loud. When I wake up before going to bed and whenever I'm alone, I say affirmations aloud for me to reprogram my mind whenever I feel that I'm not doing the way I have to do in certain areas. Get inspired. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So our imperfections are actually gift for us because they are the ones who are helping the light to come inside us. Face your imperfections. The world needs them. It's not just for you. Your imperfections is not just for you. The world needs them. Today, I'm, so get going. So you go deliberate. What do you do, right? And then, um, let me. So you get deliberate. You do something about it. Like, what do I do when I am going through this? You get inspired by reading some books, by listening to somebody, something, and then actually act on it. Get going. Today, I'm going to believe that showing up is enough. Let's say you're not well. Let's say after a long, um, you worked on a product for a long time and you're totally dog tired. And today you go, you cannot do any of the tasks which are needed to clean up or anything at work or at home or whatever. After a party, let's say you threw a big party and the next day you're dog tired. You don't feel like cleaning up for one full week. It's okay. Whatever you can do today is enough. I'm not too hard on myself when things don't get my way. The ego people have that things have to be done in a certain way. And if I say something, it has to be done, done that way. And if people don't listen, you'll start questioning your authority on them. Don't do that. Don't be too hard on yourself. I take it easy and see what I can do to improve, fix things and give the best I can. If your best is 10%, 1% today, that still counts. It is more than 0%. If I can do it, that's okay too. If I cannot even give 1%, that's okay too. This is my capacity today. I'm burned out. I want to take a break. It's okay. So this is how she digs deep. And this is an idea for everybody who is listening to this. Think about this and think about what is your get deliberate, get inspired and get going ideas and implement them actually. The next we are going to, this is the end of this week. Next week, we are going to talk about guidepost three, um, cultivating a resilient spirit, letting go of numbing and powerlessness. So this is.